In this video, I'm going to share with you how to write a professional CV, but I'm going to do it in a different way by reviewing a CV that was sent to me by a job seeker so that you can be able to know what is it that he did wrong, what is it that he did right, and this will guide you on writing a professional CV. I have been blessed that I have been in a position to help several people get jobs. Take a look at this conversation that we had with Roland. I was congratulating Roland on his new position and he told me, thanks bro, you also played a part. Appreciate for teaching me how to prepare a CV. You might be the next person sending me such a message, so you better watch this video up to the end. And without further ado, let's get started. Welcome to Daniel Mutuku Show, where I help professionals become successful in their careers. And if this is your first time here, I would like to ask you please subscribe to my channel, press the bell button so you can get to know each and every time I release a new video. Recently, we had a very heated debate or discussion on our Facebook page where most people felt like a CV does not really help you to get a job. I am fully convinced when you have a professional CV that sells you well, it will enable you to get that interview and eventually secure the job. But if you just have a CV, which is just a documentation of where you went to school, your responsibility and such stuff, it does not really add value to your application process. So now let's take a look at this CV that was sent to me by a job seeker and find out what is working and what is not working. Now, this is what you see the moment you download this person's CV and without even scrolling down, whatever you are seeing on top part, this is what we refer to as above the fold. From a very famous research, it is said that a hiring manager or an employer will take about six seconds to decide if they're going to read through your CV or not. This is where the six seconds are spent, the top half of your CV, above the fold. And when you look at this CV, I want to ask you and take maybe six seconds or so to answer the question, what can this person do? When you look at this information, it does not communicate anything that this person is able to do. What is he coming in to help us with? You can see a bigger part of the space is covered by the word curriculum vitae. Then we have his name. Of I have removed some of the information that might reveal the identity of this person. So just to conceal his identity and maintain his privacy, I've decided to change some information. Just that is the only thing that I have edited or done editing. So we can see there we have his first and last name. He has put in his postal address, his phone number. Again, that is not his phone number, email address, national ID. You can see date of birth, marital status, nationality, is a Kenyan, religion, Christian, gender, language proficiency. Unfortunately, we have wasted our time just going through this information because it tells us nothing in terms of the ability of this person to do the work that we want them to do. We are looking for an accountant, for a customer care person. We are looking for the front office. We are looking for an IT technician. We are looking for an engineer. None of that information is coming out from what we can see from the CV. We give him a benefit of doubt. Let's scroll down and see what this person can do. We can see now the career objective. When it comes to career objective, I always advise people to not have this section in your CV. Let's just read through and see what he says. To always have a sound mind body while understanding my duty towards achieving goals set by the organization by putting aside my personal interest for the benefit of the company. To become professional, effective, efficient, and dynamic credit officer with educational ideologies, creativity, and research geared towards improving the growth and profitability of the institution. To put professional work and educational experience into practical use in development and to be able to formulate, implement, evaluate and control problems by offering wide range of solutions which will improve the institution at large. A bunch of good words but still saying nothing. Do you know you can easily copy this statement from his CV and paste it on your CV and it will look as if you are the person who did the writing. 
There's nothing unique about this statement. There's nothing unique about the statement in regards to this person. It is not customized to this person. So I will repeat my advice. If you have that section of career objectives in your CV, throw it away. It is not helping you. Why? Because the career objectives are usually focused more on you. While the whole job application process is not about you, it is about how you can come in into the organization and help them solve their problems. So instead of focusing on you, focus on them. I advise you once you get rid of these career objectives, have a personal profile, a personal branding statement, a career summary that tells them who you are, what you have done, and what you can be able to do for them. That will sell you much, much better. As we scroll down through his CV, he talks about personal assessment, good, good in the personal and communication skills. Already he has failed that test because he has not yet communicated anything to us. So I'm wondering which good communication skills does he have? Okay, moving on, I can see his, his education. He got a diploma in uh, cooperative management in that tech. Polytechnic doing that year, certificate in computer packages, and he goes ahead to explain or list all the different packages that he learned. Again, not adding any value. I just jumped straight to his experience. So he was a loan officer at fourth generation between March that year uh, to date, and oh, a list of the responsibilities. Again, here I would like to advise you when you're writing your experience, don't focus more on your roles and responsibilities because they are not unique to you anybody in that position will be doing those same roles and responsibilities so it is nothing unique to you i want you to focus more on the achievements that you had because achievements are the things that set you apart these are the things that make you different from any other person who was doing that specific role i've written an article on how to write your achievements rather than your responsibilities and how to differentiate the two. I will link to that article in the description of this video. So make sure you go and read it after this section. Achievement is focused on how were you able to make the process more efficient? How did you help them save more time, save more money or generate more revenue? Use numbers and percentages that you can be able to use as evidence of having reduced the time taken by 30% or you you run a project or a campaign that's enabled the company to generate 30% more revenue than last quarter, last year, or something of that sort. To get more details, take a look at that article that I have linked to in the description of this video. Let's continue taking a look at this uh, CV. Okay, down here I can see Bob, uh, he was also a sales and debt collector, did an internship in the same organization. Again, list of responsibilities, focus on the achievement, his hobbies, and finally here I can see the referees. I want to mention something about the referees that he has put here. The first one was the church priest in the parish. And I was wondering, how would the priests give me some information about his professional conduct and how he works? So it doesn't really add up. When I look at the second referee, this is the cooperative project supervisor in the polytechnic where he did his studies. I think that one makes a little bit more sense. And finally, the third referee is the unit manager at fourth generation where he worked, I think, as the loan officer. Now, he had put these referees in the wrong order. I would advise him to put a, the unit manager as the first referee because the purpose of the referee is, is to give a positive or a comment about your conduct, your ability to work, and the kind of skills and qualifications that you do have. So when I look at your CV and I find that this looks like the candidate that I want to have in my interview or in my company, I will just give a call to your referee and ask, do you know John? How does he perform? Is he as good as he has said on the CV? If the referee confirms, yes, that is it, then you are halfway done getting the job. So in this case, I would advise him to start with the unit manager. Then the second one would be the cooperative project supervisor. And I'll put the priest to be the third referee. Probably he might not be called, but the probability of them calling the first referee is very high. 
Here at Career Point Solutions, we offer free CV review and recently we started offering free career coaching sessions. So if you would like to take advantage of this free service, head over to www.careerpoint.co.ke forward slash CV review. There you get an opportunity to submit your CV for a free review. Then one of our career coaches will give you a call to discuss with you what are the challenges that you're facing and how we can help you surpass them to get to your career destination. Again, head over to www.careerpoint.co.ke forward slash CV review. I will link to that page in the description of this video. To get a detailed and step-by-step -step guide on how to write your professional CV, make sure you take a look at this video, like this video, leave a comment, and make sure you subscribe to the channel. And until my next video, I'm out.